So Ryan Tannehill was asked about new Titans quarterback, third-round draft pick Malik Willis, and he gave one of my favorite answers. He said, it's not my job to develop him. I'll be a good teammate. If he learns things from me, that's great. Can I defend Ryan Tannehill here? Teams don't want players getting into their personnel department. So teams shouldn't ask players to develop said player. I mean, if teams are like, stay away from our personnel choices, okay, then you stay away from me developing my replacement. That's not Ryan Tannehill's job. If you're an employee, companies are constantly looking for a cheaper version of you in every field. I don't care if it's movies or landscaping. If somebody can put in the hours, get paid less, and do as good or better a job, you'll be replaced. Because most of us don't have contracts. I do. Most people don't. So Ryan Tannehill is saying, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to find my heir apparent. I'm not going to develop my heir apparent. If he wants to watch me and he wants to glean something from me, that's awesome. I'm not going to bark at him in the quarterback room, but I'm not going to share snaps with him. I will defend any pro athlete who gives that answer. You draft and develop. I'll stay out of it, but I am going to try to win my job and cut the throat of anybody who's out for my gig. There's 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Average salary right now is about $25 million. Yeah, I'm not going to find my replacement. Sorry. Mario Cristobal just bought nearly an $8 million mansion in Miami. And I'm listening to a lot of you guys out there. You know, you want everybody to believe you're such tough guys on Twitter. Some of you guys are fear mongers. You're terrified of change. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh my gosh, this NIL is going to kill the little guy. College football in the SEC killed the little guy a long time ago. The last 15 years of college football, the SEC has won or played for the Natty 14 to 15 years. Who are you kidding? You think college football runs through Iowa State? You think it runs through Boise State? It's been running through the SEC, Ohio State, and the Big Dogs forever. The second thing is what college football is lacking, because whereas the NFL ratings are going up, 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 college football's attendance and ratings in the last three years, attendance has been down for seven years. Ratings have been down for three to four. Why? Fatigue on Alabama, fatigue on the regionalization, the lack of glamour. The sport has no glamour right now. And I know none of you folks like glamour. I know you're all just... Midwestern guys, you're, you're all farmers listening to me and you don't like any glamour. Oh, bullshit. Miami and USC are the two glamour programs in the sport. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Miami and Los Angeles are places you go to party. They're places you go to vacation. Nobody goes to Ann Arbor and Stillwater to vacation or Tuscaloosa. Okay, so don't try to sell me on that stuff. The program lacks juice. It lacks glamour. It lacks big city. The NFL gives you everything. You get Green Bay. You get Indianapolis. You get New York. You get L.A. You get San Francisco. You get everything. You, you get Buffalo, the small town. New Orleans, the party city. L.A., the glamour city. And the Packers. College football is just small town after small town. And increasingly, overwhelmingly, about four programs. So Mario Cristobal is unbelievable for the sport. Listen, even in tennis, tennis ratings fluctuate based on star power. The NFL draft, lowest ratings in a decade. Why? No quarterbacks. So the idea that we don't like glamour with our football is absolutely utter nonsense. Listen, the South is great in college football, but we don't look to the South for glamour. When TV networks are setting up their shows, they always go to glamour cities. You know, the wives of Orange County, the wives of New York City, the wives of Miami. Miami Vice is sexy. Lubbock Vice is not. 
Aaron Spelling did not create a drama called Tuscaloosa 83701. Obviously, Luca is going to have to carry the Mavericks if they're going to beat the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix is the most consistent, predictable team in the league. They shoot over 50%. The Kings of mid-range. It's 88 basketball. I, I love it. 1988 hoops. I love the construct. I love the chemistry. By the way, chemistry appears to matter in basketball. <laughs> the Suns guys don't take load management games off. It's obvious. They have great chemistry both ends of the floor. But I think what's fascinating with the Mavericks, and I've, and I've talked about this with friends for years, if you were an NBA free agent, 82 game schedule, 20 different road trips, right? I mean, there's 41 games, but you, you know, you go on a lot of road trips. Wouldn't Dallas be top of your list? I mean, if you are on the East Coast and has to, have to fly to Portland or Sacramento, or if you're on the West Coast and have to fly to Boston or Miami, for the longevity of your career, fewer hours on a plane, why isn't Dallas, as they seek a number two star for Luka, why isn't it the top of everybody's list? No state tax, three-hour flight max to the furthest points in the NBA from that destination. Mark Cuban is a pro basketball, pro player owner. I've never understood this. It's remarkable to me. I understand Miami being big in free agency. It's a winter league, perfect weather, Pat Riley, Eric Spolstra. But Dallas offers much the same without being geographically located in one of the furthest points from the West Coast. Is it because Dallas is viewed as an NFL town or that Mark Cuban is such a well-known owner? He takes a little bit of the star power away from the players. But think about this. Their, their biggest stars ever have been two international players. Three, if you count Steve Nash. What is it about domestic American players as free agents that they don't choose Dallas more often? Middle of the country, decent, mild winter weather, no state tax, very pro player owner. And I mean, beautiful women, great business. I mean, if you're a single NBA player, even if you're married, good schools, I've never figured it out. It's one of the mysteries in the NBA. Why does Dallas not get more free agents? By the way, Luke is going to be the point guard. So you don't have to carry a scoring burden. You'll get your points. But, but he'll carry the ball. Um, he'll take care of a lot of the facilitating. There's something about the Mavericks that does not appeal for the last 20 years for free agents. They always get the second-tier level of free agents. I can't figure it out.